Dan, thank you very much for joining me today. Hey, Chris, thank you for having me. Um, I, I don't take these things lightly, so I appreciate the time. No worries. I'm looking forward to this conversation. We will be talking a little bit about video and more importantly, storytelling. But before we get into all of that, let's start at the very beginning. Dan, who are you? What do you currently do? And if, I, if I've got the gist of this right, you've got a pretty big story of what's happened to you in the last year. So can you tell everyone a little bit about that? Yeah, let me take this giant timeline and crunch it down. Um, long time ago in a different life, I was an engineer and I hated it. And that kind of started me on my journey of discovery. I liked the creativity of drafting in high school, but hated the career. Uh, so once I left that industry and started kind of trying to find out what I was good at and what I liked, um, the creativity and design portion is definitely what stuck. I was in a band who toured everywhere and, <clears throat> excuse me, I was in a band that toured everywhere and um, I did all of our merchandise and websites and all that kind of stuff. Started making t-shirts for other bands, started finding ways to make money. Um, through my creativity and went, huh, maybe you don't have to have a nine to five career to make it in this world. Uh, fast forward to last year, I had built um, what kind of accidentally became an agency model. Uh, it wasn't on purpose, but we had essentially uh, retainer clients monthly that we did creative work for, including story development and video production. And uh, what I lovingly called a great band-aid rip of 2020, uh, it all went away very fast. Uh, I had to close my business, personal bankruptcy, um, the tenants at my rental properties quit paying rent because they couldn't be evicted. Um, all kinds of crazy stuff happened in a very short amount of time. But we're a year out from that now, and it's literally the best thing that ever could have happened to me. So in the moment, I felt like I was in some kind of storm at sea and barely survived. And looking back, I'm very thankful for what happened last year. Like one shit. Wow. Um yeah, I don't know what to say about that. Like, first and foremost, sorry, but it sounds like it doesn't uh, turn into a, an unhappy ending eventually. They do yeah. say what doesn't kill us makes us stronger, right? Yeah, I love that you just said that because um, I often joke, but I'm not joking about the fact that I feel like half of my career is to make cliches matter again. And I take it pretty serious. Uh, we say so many things a million times that they lose their weight. And uh, yeah, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And it's absolutely true. And um, there's a story within that, right? At some point in time, someone said that and it meant a lot and it just got watered down over time. And I love that in this case, we can say that and it actually carries some weight. So, yeah. If it makes you feel any better, when I started the agency that now with 13 years in September, when I started it, I literally, I was super chuffed. I had to pay because I had no credit rating kind of thing for the business or anything else. So I paid six months rent up front for this tiny box of an office. And uh, I wanted it to be cool, so I put up a TV, and I used to have, like, Sky News playing in the background kind of thing. And uh, about two and a half weeks in, I sat there and watched Lehman Brothers go under. Uh, this is in 2008, and then watched them kind of announce this is going to be the biggest financial crisis to ever hit. And I sat there just thinking, like, wow, what have I done? <laughs> I left a good job, a salary, and all sorts of stuff. I've chucked out most of my savings on six months' rent employed someone like what the f anyway it happens to the best of us and these things are moments where you know you do have to dig a little bit deeper that's part of the fun of uh, being an entrepreneur i think the the meme that i like the most or the kind of little graphic that somebody made up was you know i quit my 40 hour a week job so for so working for somebody else so that i could work 100 hours a week for myself <laughs> uh, as an entrepreneur but uh, but that is what we do so what are you currently doing now then yeah. So um, during that time last year, uh, IRL in real life, I was um, working on something called One Minute Media where I helped uh, and I'm still helping business owners learn how to create video on their own. So I had done a bunch of corporate work for a bunch of big names that people would recognize. And those those jobs were fun. And, and I still have great stories about those jobs, but they weren't very fulfilling. And I would always come home to uh, my little gritty city of Flint, Michigan and go, OK, I don't find it completely fair that the big dogs with big budgets get to have all the fun and all these micro businesses around me that can't afford me um, aren't able to get their message out. And so I started trying to bridge that gap, which essentially looked like working with business owners, startups, uh, small teams uh, by helping them get the right 
gear in-house, whether that was their home office or brick and mortar, um, simple things, just good audio, decent camera, nothing crazy. So they could essentially get to a point to where they could just sit down and push record and create video. And we would support them along the way. So that was often uh, maybe doing the edit at the end or polishing things up or helping them get onto YouTube, stuff like that. And so during the shutdown, uh, there was like an eight day period where in the first three days we lost all of our ongoing monthly clients. Uh, looking back, I'm very thankful that we, we didn't owe any work and they didn't owe any money. So all these different uh, clients we had, we were kind of even with at the time. So it was easy to shut that down. And then we had a couple days of calm in the storm and got our little team together and like, what do we want to do now? So we launched what we called the One Minute Media Initiative, which was just doing free videos for the businesses that had been deemed essential. Uh, a lot of those were videos for restaurants so they could tell their audience how to order curbside or take out and all the new rules. Um, we also shut down a business conference that we had already launched and started selling tickets to. So we had to kind of, uh, figure that out real quick. And then the last three days we lost all of our outstanding proposal work. So in about that eight day bandaid rip period, uh, everything kind of went away and I was like, well, ladies and gentlemen, um, we got some time on our hands. What are we going to do? So I really went all in on taking that one minute media idea and digitizing it and making it into coursework and private membership where people could learn the same things, uh, but do it remotely and I didn't have to be there and could also do it inexpensively. So we kind of took what we were doing in real life and, and uh, you know made it available to everyone. Uh, fast forward, I feel like everyone finally caught up to my world, which was getting on Zoom, being on camera, making video content, even if they didn't want to. <laughs> and uh, I started helping people uh, look and sound better on camera, get comfortable on camera, and then on the back end again, polishing, editing, whatever we needed to do to support them. And that's pretty much where I'm fully focused now. Uh, it's kind of a, a take a left turn or right turn type of thing. Uh, take a right turn. It's very... DIY, take the coursework, get in the membership group, kind of tackle it on your own. And then the other direction is to work with me directly where it's uh, it's really expedited. And that's what a lot of uh, larger companies and teams want to do. They want to work with me directly, get the right gear, get on camera and get the ball rolling. So that's a, a high level version of the last 12 months. I like it. And the model, you know, being able to offer somebody the option of do it yourself, done, done for you always makes a big difference. I think there's a lot of people, probably most of the people listening to this show that know how expensive it is when you start looking at certain things and we've all been there. There's yep. nothing to be ashamed of when we're starting, mm -hmm. when we're small businesses, you know, we can't afford the resources. And like you said, the big guys can do everything and anything they want. You know, when you hear of a big company spending five, 10 million to try and create a Super Bowl ad, for example, and you think, wow, this is crazy. But obviously small businesses don't have that. There's something I want to ask you about this as well. So for me, that we've all got an amazing piece of kit that literally most of us probably have in our pockets. And that to me is our mobile phones, right? Our cell phones in, in America. Um, but this to me is still one of the best cameras I've ever had. Uh, and I've owned some big, expensive, we used to do a lot of TV stuff back in the day and video stuff. Uh, this to me is still the best camera I've ever had because one, it's always with you as a business owner. It's in your pocket because you need it for payments, banking, whatever else you're using it for everything. But at the same time, it can be whipped out really quickly, chucked onto a tripod or a gorilla pod, and it films in 4K. I'm hoping or I'm guessing uh, without knowing this much about it, but I'm hoping that this features right as part of when you're helping people and, and especially on the do it this yourself kind of elements. 1000%. I love that you brought it up. Uh, one of the taglines we use from time to time, and I think it's on our website as well, is uh, helping business owners create great video with something as simple as a smartphone. And I actually utilize a smartphone in the coursework um, because at the end of the day, the camera doesn't matter in the sense that as long as you're capturing a decent image um, and the audio is good, which is a, a different subject, um, absolutely, you can create awesome stuff with your cell phone. I actually... Um, in full blown productions when I'm working for a company on set, uh, all those different things, I still shoot with a smartphone part of the time. Uh, there's just so many capabilities. Like you said, the convenience, uh, I can get in small places. I can shoot super slow-mo, all kinds of stuff. And like you said, throw it on a tripod, get a behind the scenes angle. There's so many things you can do with them. And I'm a huge advocate because at the end of the day, uh, if it looks good and sounds good, I don't care what it was shot on. This is really funny. So I hadn't planned this, I promise. Uh, I just literally, I had some kid out yesterday because I was doing a few bits and I'm going to ask you, there you go. You can give me a professional's opinion as opposed to whatever it is that I do. 
But literally, there's two pieces of kit that I use, and it transforms my phone into something that can take ridiculously good footage and also capture audio. This which is, by the way, for anyone who's listening and not watching, is a really simple Gorillapod with an, a phone attachment at the top. I bought this about five years ago for about 15 quid, uh, $20, let's say. It costs nothing. It weighs nothing. It goes in my bag everywhere I go whenever I, we're out and about doing stuff or meeting clients or even internal stuff that we've done before. It goes with us. Why? Because it takes six seconds to spot up. You've suddenly got a non-shaky which is the most important thing for me, right? When it comes to video, a non-shaky, yeah. you're not breathing, etc., and you've know, got the shakes uh, piece of footage. And then the second thing that I bought and I invested in uh, about a year ago, maybe a bit less, I can't remember now. Uh, really simple, a Rode Lightning mic that plugs straight into the iPhone. Those two things, this cost about 50 quid. So again, we're talking $75 maybe. Those two things, which equal less than 100 bucks, less than like the price of a a decent, not a great, a decent meal out with your girlfriend or wife or anything else. If you've got a family, probably a a lot more to go out for dinner. But those two things in their own right, to me, transform the way we capture video or the way I capture video. And I think that's something that I don't think a lot of people know this, do they, Dan? Uh, surprisingly, no. And that's one of my favorite parts is there's so much new introduction into this space I've been in forever. So I feel like I'm just kind of like, welcome, welcome, <laughs> come over here and explore. Um, I actually use a small road shotgun that goes into a cell phone in the course curriculum. So I love, again, that you did that. Those gorilla pods are incredible. I have like three of them. Um, I've been in spots where there was nothing to set it on like a tripod. So I like bent it around a fence, a chain link fence and got it to hang there and do what I needed it to do. They're super versatile. Uh, sometimes I wish I had a full size tripod that could bend like that and get into weird places and audio is king. Um, you know, I've had many arguments with many filmmakers, um, what's most important as far as filmmaking video production. And I'll always stick with audio. And just having a mic that's directional like that is so incredibly important to quickly elevate you above everyone else's content who doesn't know about that. Uh, So as much as I like to share the good news of, you know, these different pieces of gear, I also like when someone's discovering it because a majority of people, like you said, don't know, and you can stand out from the crowd pretty easy. It is. And it's, uh, so we spoke to another chap, actually, he's based out in Australia recently on the show, Daryl. Um, and he does exactly that smartphone video marketing because 90% of small businesses don't have any budgets to spend. <clears throat> uh, we've got one of our guys who's fantastic, who is now currently helping a, or working and running a, a community interest project. And all they do is go out and film. And again, because it's partly funded by government and other things, they basically can do it slightly cheaper for smaller businesses in their local environment and local community. But the reality is it's still expensive, right? You bring any kind of a firm in to make you a couple of short videos. They come in with all the gear and everything else. It's thousands and it's very quickly thousands. Whereas in reality, again, like, you know, 20 quid for a gorilla pod, even just that on its own, if you're not recording any voice and you just want to capture things, if you're a restaurant, for example, set it up, frame the shot, let your chef keep doing what he's doing, but just don't touch the camera and just film 10, 20, 30 second clips each time. And to me, that in its own right, with a little bit of music in the background or something else can become a phenomenally powerful video that looks a thousand times better than, well, most things when you're holding the camera kind of thing. So anyway, that just thought I'd add yeah. that. I don't know what your thoughts are, but there's a bit of tips I, for anyone with a restaurant. hundred <laughs> percent. I love that as well. My partner, Jax, uh, she's a chef and I'm very familiar with that industry. And it is, um, I mean, 75% of the stuff that she photographs or films is with a smartphone. And it is, it's so versatile. It's so powerful. Um, I love too, that you started, uh, talking a little bit like a filmmaker, right? Like just get a decent shot, cut out the part that's good, add some music. Uh, I often joke like, Hey, this is for business owners. We're not trying to turn you into videographers. And then I often have conversations about three months later after I've worked with someone and they're like, this is fun. And I want to go even farther. Where do I set this light? How do I upgrade this camera? And we start talking like actual videographers. So even though I promise up front, you don't have to become one. Oftentimes people do get versed in it and start capturing incredible things. Um, uh, I, I joke all the time, but I'm, I'm also serious at the same time that my favorite one minute media members are the ones who don't pay me anymore. They learned, they implemented, and now they've grown and done, done super cool things on their own. And I'm so proud of that because that's all I wanted. I just wanted to, 
I view myself as kind of a big old crowbar. I just want people, you know, to get a little bit of leverage so they can take off and do what they already do amazingly in real life. I think that's awesome. And again, that's part and parcel. We work with a lot of startups, right? And we get to a point where they're like that. Well, we're going to bring in somebody now. We're going to bring somebody else in. So we continue to service and support and everything else. And eventually you get to a point, you're like that, guys, you got this. That's it. Like if you ever need any help, strategy, anything else you want to talk about, brainstorming, we're happy to help and jump in, obviously. But the reality is if we can get you from needing an agency to then you can guys can run it yourselves if you're doing that way happy days i think that's a great win right i think a lot of people look at that as being losing a client as opposed to helping a client grow to the point where they get like that the chances are they're going to tell everyone that you were fantastic and that that's what helped them get to that stage in the first place yeah 100 percent uh best referrals ever and um some of our previous members are alumni because they wanted to stick around and help other people and uh one of my favorites carol eckerly she's an image consultant amongst other things and she's on our our uh landing page she's right there at the top you know because she was the first one to kind of become a poster child for the product and take it and run and start doing interview shows and uh, some of the stuff she offers to her clients now actually includes introduction to video and shooting some videos of her clients as part of her package so that's so cool to see and that's all i've ever wanted to do because there's plenty of people to help uh, so if i can train one up and turn them loose man it's it's exciting all right, well, we've talked about the gear, which is always where I end up going first. So apologies to all the listeners because this always ends up happening. But more importantly, right, we've got the idea of we've got a phone, we've got a mic, we've got a simple tripod. So we know that we can film. The real problem for a lot of companies, especially small businesses, is what do we film? Yep. Yeah. How do you help people get around that? Uh, the first thing I usually have to do is get their mind away from... Um like cinematography, even if they don't know what that word means. I, I have to get them away from this needs to be shiny and sexy and amazing and explosions and sound design. And these are all incredible things that make video great, right? But a lot of companies are like, all right, it's video time. Now we have to make it amazing. And I take them in the other direction. Everything I do, my soul is in story development. And even if it is just a talking head video, if you're telling a compelling story and I can relate to you as a human, I'm in. And yeah, we do polish videos for some of our clients and we add motion graphics and words on the screen and different animations and stuff um, just to help, you know, keep attention. But at the end of the day, story is everything. So the joking metaphor I run with is it's uh, the medicine and the cheese. The cheese is video in this case. It's the thing that people want. It's the morsel. And when the veterinarian's like, hey, your dog's got to take this pill, you might want to put it in some peanut butter or inside some cheese. I view the medicine as story. So oftentimes when I'm working with someone, I'm very open about that I'm story first, but I find myself a lot of times having to hide the story inside of that video. Uh, when in reality, the story is the most important part and the video is kind of the vehicle that takes that story where it's going. So a lot of the work I do is in that literal development. And uh, it's a mix of things I do to help people get to that point. But most of the time it's using... Uh, fictional story tools that people have maybe heard of or are familiar with that writers and novelists and script writers and stuff use for fiction and showing business owners how they can use those same tools, but actually just tell real life stories and gain that kind of know, like, and trust from their audience, as well as that human connection of relatability. Um, so one of them is the uh, story spine, uh, Disney and Pixar use it famously in, in their movies, very simple top to bottom once upon a time. And then one day something changed and because of that and because of that until one day and then ever since. And if you think of like Toy Story or any of those films, you can see how they follow that line. Well, I like to uh, give people tools like that, but then say, remember, you can plug anything you want in here. So once upon a time, Dan lost everything. He wasn't sure what he was going to do. And then one day he was like, you know what? I I'm a resilient guy. I think I'm going to try and give this another run. Um, after that, you know, he started putting things in place and being vulnerable and sharing what had happened to him with the world. And because of that, people started giving him opportunities until one day he got back on his feet. And ever since then, he's been helping, uh, you know, entrepreneurs and startups tell their stories through video. You can plug anything in there and that doesn't have to be the script that you recite to a camera, but it can be the beginning of starting to think about what your story might be. And it doesn't always have to be once upon a time. It could be, we're releasing a new product. This is why it's important to us. This is all the work we put into it. And we think this is the part of it that you'll really relate to as us solving a pain point for you. You really can plug anything in. And that's one of my favorite parts. 
I'm a massive fan of video, but I think a lot of people, probably not unlike most digital marketing mediums today, they know it's important. Video works, video is great, video is more engaging, etc. But the same way as blogs are great, right? For SEO purposes, to be found on Google, etc. But the same way social media is great. It's a great way to build a community, to talk with people and everything else. The biggest challenge that most people have is that they'll try something once and invariably it won't work. And so therefore it's very easy to go, well, video doesn't work for me, right? Or worse still, social media is rubbish, it's dead. Uh, email marketing is dead. Uh, it's too hard to rank for blogs or whatever it is. And I think the biggest challenge, what you've mentioned there, and you call it like the medicine in the cheese, the biggest challenge is that medicine piece. It's actually discovering what the fundamentals are, what it is that you're actually gonna talk about. And I think for a lot of people, and I'm wondering if you agree or not, for a lot of people, they wanna tell a story, not necessarily their story, not necessarily the story that matters, but they want to tell a story and it's the story that they like to tell. And it's the one they've been probably telling themselves loads in their heads, uh, internal dialogue for years and years and years, which might not actually be what's happening or what really works or why the business is successful or why people choose them or anything else. How do you help people to really figure out what that narrative is? Because having a structure to it and everything else I think is great. But I've, I've always found as an agency owner, you know, when we talk to someone, the first thing they'll say is we need social media. And you're like that. Awesome, man. That sounds great. Talk to me a little bit about your business and whatever else. And invariably, you have basically come out of it going, right, well, let's look at the product. Let's look at the offering. Let's look at the avatars. Let's look at what are we trying to do? What are we trying to achieve? Then we'll talk about whether social media is a good fit. So I think the same is true. So how do you help people and how can people at home listening to this go away and try and really be honest with themselves and find that story? Uh, I swear this isn't a pat answer, but it's through story. Um, one of the things that I used to a long time ago view as a deficit, and now I see it as a strength, is the fact that I learn through metaphor and analogy. So it's the only way I know how to teach. The good part about that is story is ancient. Humans are born with it. So people relate to me very easily because I tell stories and use metaphors and stuff. So I'm very lucky in that regard that I get to kind of do it my way and it works. Um, so I'll tell stories. One of my favorites, um, I like to, uh, pick on like old white grumpy CEO guys. Uh, I've ran across a thousand of them and, uh, <laughs> I would sit, you know, in a room many, many times and they'd be like, ah, oh, we're not making a movie here, kid. Like what's up with all this story stuff. And, uh, I, you know, I'd say, well, I'm not here to convince you, but just work with me. Let's see what happens here. And oftentimes what I'd say is, hey, just picture yourself, you know, you're running this small company, 50 employees, putting out fires all week. It's a Friday. You're the last one to leave because you're the top dog. And maybe you go to your favorite watering hole after work, you have a whiskey, maybe someone else is in the bar doing the same thing. You're the only two there. You have a second drink, maybe start sipping on that. And that person comes over and saddles up next to you. And they're like, hey, good to meet you. I'm Bob. You know, what do you do? And you say, you know, it's funny. I'm a, a real estate broker. But the brokerage part is just kind of part of the business. Helping first-time home buyers is really what gets me out of bed. I love holding their hand, helping them through that fire and gauntlet. And a lot of times it's the biggest you know purchase they've ever made in their lives up to that point. So I love helping them be comfortable. And even though we do commercial and all these big deals, I really love helping those young families and stuff like that. That is so not the PowerPoint boardroom version of what you do. It's the, I had a sip off a of whiskey and I'm talking to a friendly stranger version. And that's what I want. I want that saddle up next to someone at the bar version. And so oftentimes just through t telling stories like that, people can kind of see themselves either in the story or in me or relate somehow, and then start to open up a little bit about what story actually is, because it's not scripting and reciting. Uh, those are movies and television and those things are awesome and important, but it's more so about uh, digging a little bit deeper, kind of the onion thing, you know, just get a couple layers off and see what's underneath there. Cause something drives you outside of the product and money. And that's always what I'm kind of searching for. It's always a tough one. And I think it's for a lot of people. We've heard the principle of authenticity. And I think the biggest problem that people have is that they think they need to show a certain version of authenticity. Yeah. Uh, I'm being quite cagey with my words to make sure I don't insult anyone that's listening. So sorry if you feel this way, but um, I do think a lot of people don't realize that. We're yeah. very blunt. We talk to clients. We're ridiculously blunt. In fact, like we rub people the wrong way quite often. I'm okay with that. Like if they don't want to 
to sort of take on board our points of view or why we're trying to help or why we're trying to point people in the right direction. I'm okay with that. And as a result, in the content that we create, whether it be the podcast, whether it be live videos, whether it be anything, it's always the same. Like we're always just pretty much black and white. There is no real gray middle ground. Some things are great ideas. Some things are terrible ideas. Some things are experiments. Some things will work. Some things won't. That's basically the bulk of it. But I think a lot of people want to to basically kind of show a version of themselves. So if they're going to make that video, like yeah. you mentioned earlier, and it might not be car chases and extras and whatever else, but it will be, you know, I've got to be shirt, tie, suit, one thing or another, make sure I look really good and we'll get a, a nice office that we'll rent or an Airbnb. How many videos have we seen with the, you know, the guy selling that multi-million pound <laughs> course with his rented Ferrari outside and an Airbnb that he's sitting in for a day before he runs out of money. But yeah. the biggest challenge with all of that is that then there's no connection with that person the day that you actually meet them. And this is something that I bang into everyone about. The same way as you come across on your video or on your live or on your social media, if the day somebody meets me, I'm, you know, if I've, all my videos are me suited and booted in a beautiful Canary Wharf office that I happen to be visiting for the day for a client or whatever else. And then literally every time they meet me, I'm usually, to be fair, this is the best dressed I've been in ages, right? Usually it's a hoodie. Um, but that is who I am. Like, I don't believe in I need to wear a suit to try and impress you. I believe that if I can talk to you and get into to sort of what we need to actually achieve, I can impress you. And so many people miss that. And I think video is such an amazing opportunity to be yourself, to not panic too much, not overthink it. Don't try and come up with this fake James Bond persona or anything else just be who you are and you know some people will like you and some people will love that video and unfortunately the truth about it is and this is the the internet and it's uh well basically summed up is that other people won't like you and they may even be vocal and go what a shit video or yeah. oh my god i don't agree with you at all you're, you're an idiot and you go cool i'm okay with that as well but i think a lot of people miss that and they don't I don't think they understand the power of just being who you are so that you get that connectivity, that continuity between your videos, whatever you're creating, and who you are as a person when you meet that potential client. Yeah. Man, I tell you what, I hope I don't seem overly agreeable, but we agree on so many stinking things uh, from philosophy to execution. And again, I'm not just saying that. Um, we could unpack everything you just said for a couple hours, I'm sure. Uh, one of the, the things that terrifies me is when someone in my realm, especially if they're already a client, says, you know, hey, how do I be more authentic? Like there's some kind of book I can sell them or something. And it, it terrifies me because I'm like, oh, man, if you're asking that, you're in a bad spot. Let's just start over here. Um, I often get people asking me how I come across so authentic. And I'm I'm truthful with them. I say I'm so lazy. I am so lazy that I don't have the energy to put into a persona. You just get me because I got to put the energy at the places that matter more. And that's the truth. That's how I approach it. You know, it's not me like, well, I tried it, blah, blah. No, I just don't try it all because I'm lazy, <laughs> you know. And then um, I'll give this little three part thing that you triggered with some of what you were saying, too, about how you come across and how relatability matters so much in video, even if someone doesn't relate to you at all. Um, my moniker for all my personal branding stuff is the antipreneur. And that's a, a kind of a pattern interrupt for most people anyway. They're like, what does that mean? You know, what's that all about? And I talk about those components of story all the time. So you think about video and one of the first things that happens when someone sees you on a video is you start to build that rapport, that know, like trust that we're all after sometimes without ever meeting them. And that's incredible. I tell stories all the time and people finish my story because they've seen it in a video or in a podcast or something. And I'm like, oh, cool. You saw that, you know, like that's, that's incredible. So you can start to build that rapport. The second thing that happens, I don't have a better word for it, but it's essentially fame. It's micro fame, right? But it's fame. So I'll go out and people will be like, oh, you're the guy that makes those YouTube videos. Those are so cool. And it doesn't mean I'm famous. There's just that recognizability. Um, and then the third thing is what you hit on earlier. And it's the most magical part about being consistently on video. You got the know, like, trust. You got that recognizability. And then when someone meets you in real life, I don't care if it's a Zoom call, phone call, networking meeting, in person, and you are like you were in your content, it's a done deal. It's a done deal. You know, it's, it's the reason that an actor will be yelled at on the street because of his character that was evil in a movie and someone's mad at that evil character. People relate to what's on the screen so much. And um, I always say that if I've done my job well, we get a client to about 80% of what it's like to meet them in real life. Their flaws, their wins, 
polished, unpolished, all of the things, the dirt under the rug and the features and benefits too. And yeah, if we can get them to 80%, people are like being able to relate to them as a human. And I always like to remind people too, like, remember some, somebody somewhere with a giant bank account might be sitting in their bed with Cheeto dust on their shirt, watching a little six inch screen on a phone and absorbing your content. It isn't always that everyone is somewhere fixed on a screen in a theater, watching your commercial. People absorb this in all different kinds of ways. And that's where those kind of three magic things come in. Um, I'm so glad you brought that stuff up, man. Cause it's so important. And my best performing videos, a lot of times are the ones where I just throw a cell phone in front of my face and share my thought. Cause I just had an idea in the moment. I think to be fair, there's two things there. One, you've made me realize that that very well may be the case for me too. I may just be lazy as well. I can't be asked to throw on a different personality <laughs> and then try and remember which personality I used for which client. That sounds exhausting. Um, yeah. so I realized that I might be just massively lazy. Thank you, Dan. Um, <laughs> But the second part is exactly what you said. I, I com couldn't agree more. Again, just being who you are, connecting that to, to when people actually meet you, it's so powerful. And, you know, we've had, I've had arguments with clients about the use of video. And we, we don't need to use video. Video doesn't work. Video doesn't do it for our industry, for our this, for our that. And I'm sat there going, it's just simply not true. It's a great way to connect with people. It's a great way to be able to tell more information, give more information, right? How much can you put in a graphic? Not a huge amount. How much can you put uh, in a text post? Not a huge amount. How much can you tell someone about you in a video? Well, everything, right? From where yeah. you're standing, what you're doing, what you're wearing, how you dress, how much effort you put into your hair or yeah. not. Um, you know, all of these things kind of come across and you mentioned there, you know, the, the initial element of trust, whenever we meet someone, right, you get a gut feeling. I don't like this guy, or I don't like that girl, or I do like that guy, or I do like that girl. That's an interesting kind of moment. And it happens on video as well. It's why there's lots of Gary V haters. And then there's lots of Gary V minions. And, you know, I sit somewhere in the middle where I think, you know, about 25% of his stuff is gold dust and about 75% is just Anyway, yeah, not great. It's not for me. Um, but I think it's really important because that is, it's like one of the first touch points you can have with a potential client. Um, and again, if you're telling your story properly, some of this content is evergreen. It's not going to go out of style. You telling the story of how you started, why you started, and those first clients that you helped get success with, you can reshare and reuse that video time and time and time again and it will continue to get you results. Again, depending on your company, the offer that you have, how you do things, what you advertise and how you share that. But the other video on its own on your hard drive won't do anything for obvious reasons. But I think yeah. that's a really powerful tool that people don't realize that content lives on for, for ages. Yeah, yeah. I um, I often view that as kind of like uh, the old West movies here in the States where they have their bullets in their gun belt and they kind of pull them out one at a time. Uh, when you have that, that content at the ready, you can just kind of pull it out and shoot it quickly. Um, so I'll have a lot of people just in general conversation somewhere online say, you know, oh man, I wish I knew more about, you know, shooting video on my smartphone. And I'm like, actually, I did a video on that. Here's a link. Check it out when you have time. So those little bullets, those little ammunition, you know, pieces um, come in handy. So, and it, it, it makes you look like an authority in your field. You're helpful. Uh, it's something you already put time into. So like you said, evergreen, why not get more out of it? Um, I think that stuff's super important because it's, it's just sometimes what you don't think about. You're not thinking about the future. You're thinking about the now and let's make this video for this reason and then kind of forget about it. The other thing too, um, that I wanted to share quick was, um, you also don't know what parts of your authenticity are coming through sometimes. So even if you're just being yourself, you don't always know what's coming through. And this little story I have about this is still impacting me to this day. So last year, you know, lost everything. I literally went out into the woods to like find myself, spend some time alone, came out. And one of the first things I did amongst many things was to segment off a portion of my email list, about 30 people. And it was all people that knew me pretty darn well. So previous clients had been, become friends with over time, colleagues, uh, other film people, mentors, mentees, all these, these people. And I just emailed them and said, Hey, I've lost everything. I'm starting over. If you could keep me to top of mind, that would be great. At the same time, I don't want to only ask and take. So you guys know my skill set Well, if I can help you with any quick wins or do some work you're, you're stuck with, please let me know. And 
the response to that email, that email was incredible. Uh, it was everything from I'll coach you for free. I want to see you win to, um, I would never have the guts to share openly like you just did. That's incredible. So it's just gamut. And because the, the response is so incredible, a few weeks later, I just had this idea and I wrote the same group and just kind of said, thank you for the response. It was overwhelming. It was touching. Um, it really motivated me. It was, it was awesome. And since I have you guys' attention, here's a fun little, you know, question I have for you. So if a reporter came up to you and said, Hey, you know, that Dan Bennett guy, right? What would you say his superpower is? What would you tell that reporter? And it was just this fun, like story thought experiment. I really wasn't after too much. So I got 20 some responses out of the 30 and 12 of them um, had some form of when I watch your content, I feel super calm and absorbent, like I can do what you're talking about. Or when you interviewed me, it was so easy to be comfortable and just open up and share with you. Or when I listen to your podcast, it's just soothing and it makes me you know, feel good. And, and I had never heard these things in my life. So all of a sudden I had... 12 different entrepreneurs saying some form of the way you deliver or the way you interact with people makes them feel comfortable and safe. And that, that became a big deal to me because I never knew it before. So all those years I was making content, I had no idea people felt that way. And it's a version of authenticity, but it was one that I was completely unaware of. So remember when you put yourself out there, there might be an impact you don't even know you're having. I couldn't agree more. Dan, before we wrap up, what's the biggest tip you'd say for any small business right now listening to get started with video marketing? Oh, it's, it's what I call the cocktail. So some people um, say, just ship it better done than perfect. Just put a phone in front of your face and talk and put it out. And then some people say, polish it. It's representative of your brand. You don't want to put out garbage. Uh, I look at that like a cocktail, uh, say a screwdriver, orange juice and vodka. Some people like a lot of juice, a splash of vodka. Some people like a lot more vodka. Um, look at those things when you're looking at your business and yourself and see where you fall on that scale and start there. So definitely get started, but find out um, if you have the capabilities of polishing it a little bit, give that little extra day or two and polish it. If not, try and do your best, be authentic and you know use your resources the best you can. Um, the other thing too, if you don't mind if I share, um, I have a website called video.sandbox. I'm sorry sandbox.video apologies and essentially it just leads to a free community where people can uh, put up videos practice stretch their wings get their reps in and still get reviews and critiques from other members but it's in a loving environment because everyone's there for the same reason that's just to kind of practice and get good um, so something like that even if you only did it with friends and family and close colleagues that you trust and just show them some of your videos while you get your reps in uh, yeah, start building those muscles. And remember, like we said earlier, that it can be something as simple as a smartphone. At the end of the day, as long as you look and sound pretty good, people will buy in if the story's good. I love it, Dan. Where can people find you online? So I tried to make this easy. The word antipreneur is weird, and I get that, but I'm the antipreneur.com. Um, if you add forward slash link stack onto that, it's all my links to everywhere I am in the world. Uh, and that's literal, like a stack of links. And if you search on any platform, Antipreneur, you're going to stumble across me. Just look for uh, bald head, beard, and tattoos. You'll find me. <laughs> well, we'll add the link to help people out into the show notes, just in case. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but Dan, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you. This was fun. And um, it's always nice to, to chop it up about story and video when there's camaraderie and understanding from the other party. So this was super fun. We'll have to look at doing some, uh, some more content together, I'm sure. Yeah, man, I'm done. That would be awesome.